Okay. Well, we decided the things we can live without are fairness, courage, equality, justice, and honor. Example, look outside. With uh, things we do live with is trust, respect, forgiveness, integrity, and humility. Do you have any questions to them, to that group? <laughs> why why uh, honor that part of you live without? Why is it, you, I mean, you, you can live without it. Well, like me personally, or? Your group. Part of your group. Part of your group. I like that. Um, why do we choose that? Uh-huh. Um, you can have a parent that's not honorable.
disability, temperance and patience, since most of us don't have any. <laughs> that we can't do without our honesty, forgiveness, respect, integrity, and honor. honor. Joker of the group here. <laughs> I'd like to add stuff on here. I won't name no names, Norm. <laughs> so this kind of more or less got blown out of what we were supposed to do. And <laughs> went to <laughs> so we need more money. <laughs> we can do without taxes. <laughs> We have justice, trust, and honesty that we need. We can do it without temperance and kindness. <laughs> There's another one on here that, you know, that was put on here, but probably not the same as that. Thank you. Make sure that we not only kind of remember this characteristic when we're working with kids, but working with one another and, and with yourself as well. You know, make sure they're there in your heart so that you can show them with your teammates, your school transportation staff, because then you can show it to our kids. Okay? That whole resetting the button, compassion, forgiveness. That's really critical for those kids because, you know, sometimes they raise your voice and for us elderly, we think that's mm -hmm. disrespectful, but for kids, it's a behavior. It's mm -hmm. their way because they don't have the language to tell you what's happening to them. They yell, they scream, they push, they punch, they whatever it is because they don't know how to say it in words that's appropriate and that's we do. So they do those things to communicate their frustration like what Karen said, hitting that feeling of stress level for them, that's how they communicate that. So if you could just remember that and reset the button for the next morning, that's forgiveness right there. You know? So thank you for putting forgiveness and compassion on your list because as a special ed director, I, I bow my head to that. <coughs> so, um, so this was really critical that we not only have them you know, but make sure we practice them ourselves because that's what makes us all the same. That's what makes us human beings. That's what makes our job easier to do every day, every morning. And, you know, it helps with the burnout, right? Because we get to that level of burnout because we were human. We get that stress level too, you know, that brain that Karen sh shared. We get, sometimes our brain are in that stress level mode too. So just remembering that, practicing those every morning, Kind of help us deal with that burnout too. Okay, well, we're in trouble. you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so staff to staff relationships. We're going to talk about how you work with the district office, how you work with your transportation staff. If yeah, if we would turn off the the phone ringer for now while we're doing it until 11, I would appreciate that very much. Um, and then in the context of staff to staff relationship, it's critical that we we um, Remember all those characteristics that we talk about because then we improve the quality of our relationships. 
and then we improve the quality of our work. Did you see that whole connection that when we have that mindset, we improve our relationship with others around us, and then what that, when that's improved, then we improve the work that we do. It's all connected. So even though having those respect <coughs> and forgiveness and um, those other things that we were talking about, even though your team members are not with you, you always feel that they're part of they're part of your team. They're part. They have a role in the work that you do. And when you feel that partnership, then we know that uh, you feel safer too. When you know your technical staff. <coughs> Make sure all your brakes are working and you've got all the windows working, the parts of the bus working, then you feel safer. When you know that your concept skills staff, your district office staff got things organized, got the communication out, then you know you feel safer. So it's all that kind of relationship of the roles that we do. And then when we have all those relationships working and those roles working, then we know we feel safer in our job in the work that we do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all connected. Um, and then you can, when you can focus on the work, then you can ask, you have that relationship with each other to ask for things that you need, and you can do that with confidence. Or if you don't have good communication with your um, other bus driver, you know, when you've got good relationship, you can always call, call call them out and say, hey, what's that all about, you know? But if you don't have that relationship, <laughs> was that a part of a job? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. Yeah. It wasn't me. It was me. <laughs> what was your name? Brenda, I did turn this on. Did you turn it on? Okay. I was so I did. So that, that's the whole idea that when you've got that strong relationship, you can really um, have that communication. You can communicate with confidence with one another. So is that really true? Will the get get will the brakes get fixed today? No, I'm stuck in this meeting. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Will the windshield washer fluid be full? Yes. Okay. Will it work? No. It will be full. Know where the dog is. <laughs> will you guys, as the driver, focus better on the road when those things are done? Yes. 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 And then, what else do you think that you need to, that you can get done better when? What was that? <laughs> you're, being, you're being smart, too. <laughs> There's no humility on this table. <laughs> so maybe when Cindy, there's a change in the route, Cindy is able to let you know, that makes you feel safer. That makes you feel more confident in the job that you do. So there's that communication that we were talking about. When there's enough communication between the staff that support you in the work that you do, then you know that you are confident. Technical skills. This is just a review of what our technical folks do. Someone has to have them, right? Someone has to do the job. And we've got fortunate staff to do that job. And then, when is the la what is the last thing you want to hear from someone fixing your brakes? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Hopefully that's not it, right? Hopefully you say, you're good to go for the day. You know? Why is this for the day? <laughs> you said it, for the day. <laughs> for the day. <laughs> for the whole time. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Are we stuck? Oh, oops, there it is. There you go. Okay, let's talk about our district office. Someone needs to know how all the pieces fit together, right? People at the office needs to know how those, all the different parts, all the different routes are working together because that's critical for you guys to be able to do your job well. And what is the last thing you want to hear from 
people planning the route. What do you want to do? <laughs> 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 I don't know. 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 I don't you want to be able to say, oh, okay, I got it, Cindy. There's a change in the route. We got it figured out. We're good to go. Not just today for a long time. <laughs> and oops, we don't want to say the oops, right? We don't want to say it wasn't done. So the relational skills, we know that. We talked about that. It's the most important set of skills. But then it's usually the least attention that we give to it, right? So we got to make sure we... We really put a lot because we said it's the foundation, right? For all the other things that we do, for all the skills that we do, this is the foundation. It's the doorway to the conceptual and technical skills. So if you don't have good relationship with your technical staff, that's just bring them cookies. That's right. You don't and get your break fixed. He can be bought with a box of chocolate. <laughs> hey, got there you go. And the same thing with the, the staff to you guys. It's the same way, you know. So we talked about a lot about developing healthy relationship. It does not happen naturally. What does that mean when it doesn't happen naturally? You gotta work on it. You have to work on it. Same thing we, we do with our spouses, right? How many of you have been married more than 10 years? How many of you have been married 20 years? How many of you have been married 30 years? How many of you have been married 40 years? How many of you have been married 50 years? But 40 years is good. What makes that 40 years last that long? <laughs> Thank you. 
each other's back, yes. A big thing that I've noticed is being transparent. So when you have to talk with others and maybe you are in charge of them, you still need to be able to share everything so that they don't think you're hiding stuff from them and whatever else. So transparency is very important. <coughs> I think that's on one of these slides here. Can you tell that to the federal government? So it's a group of people working towards a common goal, relationships and action. If relationships are not healthy, it will be rebuilding teamwork. Haven't we noticed when a team doesn't work very well together, things fall apart, things aren't very smooth, so that's very big. Teamwork does not just happen. You have to put effort in it. Um, here we are. So I can fail on my own much easier than I can succeed on my own. I can succeed much easier as part of a team, and it is more difficult to fail as part of a team. So teamwork is going to make you stronger. Things are going to be easier, and it's going to feel more smoother. I, I'm sorry, that's not proper English. <laughs> Principles for team building. Treat people with dignity and respect. We talked a lot about that with Ludi. Identify the purpose of the team. So all, there's all kinds of different teams that you will probably be involved with. So identify the purpose of each team that you're with so that you're able to get to uh, what the result is that you guys are all in need of for that team. Assist in setting goals. So don't just say you're in charge, you set the goals. Everybody needs to have a say in the goal or there's not going to be buy-in, and that will be the biggest part of that. Support the goals with measurable benchmarks. What does that mean? Rewards. Rewards. What does it mean to be measurable? Achievable. Something that you guys are able to measure. So. Um, every student gets on the bus at a certain time and is all also able to get off at a certain time. That could be a measurable goal because the time is set. You can see that. So something measurable. You can <coughs> see the result. Learn from failure. Failure won't happen. It usually will happen. <laughs> so learning from it is going to be the biggest thing and being able to tweak the goals if you need to or be able to um, build on those goals or whatever else. So learn from the failures. Don't just say, well, I suck. I can't do this anymore. Never mind. You need to be able to move on and keep going. <laughs> Celebrate little successes as well as big ones. Yay, everybody got to school on time? Or, you know what? This guy finally made it on the bus. So, so those are all kind of considered big successes. I get really <laughs> we do celebrate that. <laughs> yes, good. Be transparent, like I was saying. Talk to everyone about all the needs that is necessary for whatever is going on that day so everybody's in the know. Give the team members time to build <coughs> trust, be able so that they know that they can rely on you, whatever is going on within that team that you guys need to build together. And when there's change in the membership of the team, it must start over, all over again, and building the trust. And that's so hard, <laughs> because you just built a good team, and then all of a sudden, you've got to start over again. But because maybe you have same team members, but just maybe one or two different, it might be an easier transition to start over again. But be able to start fresh so that everybody's on the same page and going to the same. Don't just assume, hey, you got to catch up for us. Where are you going? Make sure everybody is on the same page. And a supervisor or manager needs to have that follow through as well with that. <coughs> and are you two the supervisors? Yeah. <laughs> Brent is our supervisor. Okay. <laughs> it, it's good to follow through as far as following up with the teams, making sure that they're all on the same page, making sure that they all understand everything that's going on. So that's the biggest part with that. So, when people work in unhealthy relationships, there's fear, resistance. They don't want to work there, so they don't want to do anything. Fight or flight, hmm, not going to do it, or, yeah, you suck, no, you suck, you know, whatever. Hostility, just sitting back and going like this is like passive aggressiveness. They can feel the hostility. 
anger, you don't agree with them, so you, they can see your face and not being very happy. Stress, you're stressed because you have to be on this team, but you don't really want to be. Depression, you're sad that things aren't going the way they should be. Insecurity, just not sure that things are going to work out well. And then resentment, you might resent the leader or the team or whatever else. And so these are all unhealthy relationships for a team. But when you work together, you feel respected, you feel appreciated, validated, motivated, secure, less stressed, committed, satisfied, excited, positive, and valued. So many of these things that you have already put on there, on your list, is all part of that same feeling with the teamwork that you'll have. So, strategies to be successful teams. Create a safe, trusting environment. Everyone needs to feel safe and that they can be trusted and everyone feels like they are part of it. Tell what to do rather than what not to do. For instance, in the school, when there's less kids running in the hall, if I say to them, stop running, the only thing they hear is running. running. <laughs> So please walk. So ask them to do the thing you want them to do, not the thing you don't want them to do, because they will hear that thing. So please walk, please talk quietly, please sit still, you know, any of those things. And increase motivation, concentration, and involvement. So um, motivation to help each other in the team, help, help involve everyone so that it's not just whatever you say, I'll do kind of thing, be involved with it. <coughs> and, all right. So I'm going to talk a little bit, we're moving out of Nantes now and into practical knowledge, practical application, things you could probably teach me as easily as I can teach you. What do we know about students? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the top of my list. They, they lie. They lie. <laughs> why, do, why do kids lie? They lie. Usually because they're afraid. They're afraid of a punishment. Very rarely do humans, by nature, lie just to lie. Usually it's out of a fear of something. So, good point on lying. All right, students are behavior experts, especially students with trauma. Their number one first coping mechanism, any extended resource bus driver or worker can know this, they know how to manipulate you based on your mood. They walk in, they see how you're feeling, <coughs> they know how to get what they want, whether it's through screaming, throwing something, being sweet, whatever. They are behavior experts. I learn more from watching them than I do from any college course I've taken. Uh, they know if you don't like them, and I'm not going to lie, there are some students that rub me wrong. No, we're not supposed to say that, but there are some that I just click with better and some that I don't. It's always, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, we don't obviously, hopefully never portray that to the kids, but the kids can tell if we treat them differently. Um, they know if they're not the favorite. And they know when you're lying or when you break the rule. They catch me every time. Mrs. Merkley, you said we can't eat in here. Why are you eating? I don't get a break today. <coughs> I have to eat sometime. But they immediately, they call me on it every time. Um, they know if their punishment is harsher than another student's um, because you're irritated at them and you just can't take any more today. Uh, they know how to push your buttons, and it is on purpose. Um, it's not because they're mean. It's not because they're bad kids. It's because that gets them what they want. It's always gotten the result that they want. That's why they do it. That is what their behavior is for. The same way, if I go into a store and I speak kindly to the person, it's because I want them to give me something in return, right? I want, hey, I need a favor. I'm not going to go in and say, I need this from you. Give it to me now. I'm going to go in with a certain attitude. Well, their behavior gets the response they want. 
if they're screaming and crying, it's because they want out of the situation they're in. And it almost always works. Um, and they're not afraid of conflict. These trauma brains thrive in conflict. They, they see it all the time. They live it. And they're, sometimes they feel safest in the conflict. So if they're trying to start conflict with you or with a peer, just recognize that that's where they feel comfortable. But we can teach them that there's another way. And we're working on that with our kids at school. Um, and I assume you work on that in your buses as well. That we don't have to be in conflict in order to have a relationship. Um, they're trying to control their environment through their behavior. It almost always works. We touched on that a little bit. They want to be in control of what's going on around them. And they're trying to push you away. A lot of adults have proven to be not trustworthy in their lives. They want you to prove that they know that, you know, prove them wrong. They don't want you to come at them nicely when they come at you angry. Does that make sense? I got kind of backward on my, my okay. So, so they come at you angry, and they want you to respond the way everyone else in their life responds, which is, what's wrong with you? Stop. <coughs> Sit down. Take your meds. Whatever they hear at home. That's what they expect to hear. So if you come at them Hey, sounds like you are having a tough time. How can I help? And if you keep your voice low, we prove them wrong. We yeah, prove it. <laughs> well, that's true. On a bus, they can't hear you. You're right. I do have, in the classroom, I have benefit of <coughs> a different environment. So the bus, you know your bus very well. Um, they are setting themselves up to fail. These kids are always kicked off the bus. They're always kicked out of classrooms and put in ISS. They always fail. They're going to do it before you can see how bad they are. They're going to prove how bad they are. So again, we need to try to be that adult in their life that helps them succeed, that gives them a little taste of success. There's all this cool brain stuff that I won't bore you with because that's my passion, but about how behavior, you, you have to have every, every good thing you do has to be rewarded quickly or you won't keep doing those good things. I won't keep coming to work if you don't pay me. I promise, I won't. Uh, these kids, they've failed and failed and failed. It's what they know. So why put in the effort? I'm just going to say it again. Um, all right, we're going to put those three in. So, Anna, do you, know, do you know what that word is? All the things that lead up to why this person is acting out. So, an antecedent could be... Hey. So, be aware of the setting events. It could be that the student was up all night because somebody is yelling or fighting in their other room. Or so you, you see how tired they are. Maybe they didn't get to eat before they got to on the bus. Um, maybe they didn't have uh, enough coats, clothes, whatever warmth that they need to get on the bus. So those are all setting events. So things that happen before the behaviors. Assume good intentions. So assume that maybe they just need someone to say hello to them and a good morning and how are you and those things. These are all warm things that they will feel. Is there a pattern to the behavior? Is it every single morning they get on the bus and they look that way? Do they look very cold? Do they look like they're hungry or they're just angry? And it could be that they are angry because their mom just yelled at them or somebody or they're fighting with a kid, a sibling or whatever else. Or maybe you even see somebody else picking on them when you're on the bus wanting to get on the bus. could even be that. So watch for those things. Um, to get more respect, give more respect like Karen was talking about. And I'll tell you what, it's hard when they're mean. It's hard to give them respect, but if you say, oh, but good morning, even though they say you suck or I hate you, good morning, have a good day, it'll throw them off balance. They won't know how to respond to that. Or they might respond more and more negatively, but generally it will set them off guard. 
And then sensory items, sometimes a lot of students may need some sensory things to um, help them be calm. So some of our students struggle in big areas with lots of kids, and they might need something that calms them down. Maybe it's their own little pet animal toy that they have, or maybe it is just food or anything like that. So sensory items, sometimes these kids need these things to help them feel calm. Um, um, during the behavior, <laughs> dignity, we talked a lot about that. Maintain the student's dignity. Um, they need to feel like not everyone's watching them and judging them. So if you have to call them on something, do the best you can to talk to them one-on-one -on -one separately from everybody else so that they're not hearing it. Um, save their dignity. Um, prompt them. Then give them time to process. So remember, we talked about this yesterday. Don't stand in the seat. And then, you know, hey, I said don't stand in the seat. You know, if they're not responding, whatever. Give them time to be able to hear what you're saying. And remember, we talked about this. So do you remember what happened when you did it? You know, give them time to think about it and be able to process it. Be aware of your own feelings and behavior. And many times you come to work and you're stressed from stuff and anger. Or maybe your car didn't start or you got a flat tire and all kinds of things. And so your day is horrible. Try really hard to not let that affect the other people that are around you. That's going to make a huge difference. And, and even though you're angry and you're stressed and everything else, it's not okay to touch them ever. Even if you're going to just put your hand on their shoulder and say, hey, it's okay. Many kids don't in, uh, approve of touch. They don't like it. It sets them off. It could be a whole <coughs> trigger to them. So just remember to not touch them for any reason and then just kind of process with them. Remember, we talked about that. Or, hey, do you need anything? Talk about those things with them. Yes. The exception would be extended resource for you. They're used to having their hands held and touched. I mean, there are there are some buses that it's a comforting touch, and they're used to that. That is correct. There are some students that do need that. that is right. So if you're aware that they need that, then yes, for sure, that's the exception. So um, talk with the teachers that are involved with those students. So the ERR classrooms in the middle school, the high school, elementary. Call them and say, hey, this student seems to act out every single time. <coughs> what kind of things do they respond to? Please, I would be happy yes. if you guys called. We are totally open to yes. answering questions from our students. Anytime, whenever you would like to. Um, and I know that the ERR teachers, I'm sure, are very welcome to <coughs> those things as well. So consequences after the behavior. <sighs> Avoid asking why. Why would you do that? What's the, why are you doing all these things? And the why is it really that important? Because it could be they don't even know if they had a bad night, something else happened. Ask them, <coughs> what's going on? What can I help you with? Because the why is going to put them on the defense. They're going to say, because I said so, because I'm the boss, you know, whatever. It's automatically going to be something they're going to challenge. But if you offer what is going on, then they can't, they, they will respond or they'll be thrown off by um, what happened. Well, he just said F you and I was mad at them and whatever else. Or, uh, I don't know, I lost my cool. Or something, they have to, it's a different response than if you say why. It's going to be an automatic why because we said so. It's, and a lot of times they don't know, so that will be a good response for that. Avoid punitive punishment. You know what? He's making me mad. I'm making him clean the whole bus when he's done. Mm -hmm. So the punishment is a punitive thing. You want to discipline him, not punish. Correct, correct. Which leads us into the next one. Consequence that fit the crime. If they're throwing stuff on the bus, absolutely bring them back to help them clean up the area or whatever else. If they're wasting your time, maybe they need to do something for you afterwards to make up that time that they were given that you had to deal with. So the, the punishment to fit the crime, um, it, sometimes it's really hard, but natural logical consequences 
really are going to make the biggest difference to them in their thought processes from stopping what's going on and continuing with it. So does that make sense? Natural logical. They're wasting their time, how they make it up, if they're making a mess, they need to clean it up. If they're disrespectful, then they need to be able to have the chance to <coughs> apologize to someone or make it up to them. Ask them, how are you going to make it right with them? Any of these things, they can tell you. It helps them process, and if they're not willing to, then say maybe, hey, stay on the bus for a second. Let's talk about how you can make it right with somebody. But the biggest thing is forgiving, like you all said, forgiveness is huge, and being able to move on the next day or in the afternoon when we see them again or whatever. That's the biggest thing. So, the big yellow flash. <laughs> All right. So we've we've kind of pounded this into you. You're the first and the last contact for the day, which, in a lot of ways, makes you more important than what happens during the day. It it truly is what they remember. They will not remember what they taught, especially our special ed kids. They may not remember their lessons from the day, but they will remember how they were treated every time. Uh, they'll remember the feeling. So, um, I feel like we've thrown so much at you. And you might just end early. Does that make anyone sad? Yeah. 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 So, uh, we'll be happy to answer a few questions. After, I, I'm going to do some wrap-up just to talk, to remind you what we've talked about. And then we can answer some questions. We can go through some what-ifs for a few minutes if you want. Um, so, remember that that ACEs score is not destiny. So don't take it. If you yourself scored high, don't panic. It's not your destiny. We, as a community, as, as CUNA School District, we're working to fight these. We're working to teach kids resilience. And it can be taught. We can teach how kids how to overcome their circumstances and rise above. And I think that's the coolest thing coming out of education right now, that we can teach this, and we are. Um, stressed brains don't learn or react the same as non-stressed brains. It's a scientific fact. Once they get into their stressed brain, has anyone ever seen red? Get, mad, get so mad you just so red. Do you think when we do something here, we can just tell Brenda that we have stressed brains? You know? <laughs> yeah, do you know? Feel free. We give you permission to use any of our language to do whatever you need to do. Oh, no. I would not care. They might walk. I have it. I'm not allowed to hit. I'm not allowed to sit. I'm not allowed to throw things on the bus because I am a bus driver. I am a bus driver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so just be aware of, of how stressed braids are reacting. They spend a lot of time in survival mode, these kids do. They don't really make a lot of rational decisions because most of their time is spent just trying to survive. So um, be, be patient. Of actually going to the core of that problem, why it gives these days are like this, instead of, you know, sugarcoating it and holding their hand, beating the shit out of their parents and saying, hey, wake up. You know those children, are correct? <laughs> Those are all <laughs> so we are not talking about kids who are breaking the law or behavior issues. We're talking about kids whose brains are truly damaged through something. Okay, and um, other kids who are dealing with other things and breaking the law, they may have some of that brain issue there as well. But it is a society issue. And um, so much research I could go into, but I'm not going to dump it on you. But uh, truly, the answer is less punitive punishment, and that goes against everything that's taught. Everything. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Um, <coughs> forgiving kids will teach them to be forgiving adults. Mm -hmm. But if we don't forgive them and let them move forward without that hole being over their head every day, they're going to grow up distrusting, dishonest, angry, and... Um, and continue the cycle. And continue the cycle. Yeah. And, and so it's not a simple, again, every single student, every situation is different. Um, but, but just understand that it's taken us a couple of years to get completely on board because we, we've been doing all these trainings. And, and I still fight it sometimes. Are you kidding me? I 
This kid just deserves to be in Iowa Reds. What the heck? Why, why do I have to? But it works nearly every time to back off and let them take responsibility for their choices, to forgive them, say, I don't appreciate you. Now, you don't have to let them get away with anything. Kids still don't swear. They still don't get to call me names and treat me with disrespect. You hold them to a very high standard while being gentle and forgiving. And so I think that's where you have to go with the balance. You, you don't have to crack the whip all the time and be in their face but you still hold them to this standard. No, I, I do expect you to do all of your schoolwork. This is what I expect you to do. I expect you to behave this way. If you don't, here's the choice you make. You, our kids still get suspended. They still go to ISS. It's not a, but it's not done just because I'm fed up and sick of it. It's done because this will teach them. It will reinforce what they need to know in order to learn. And remember, discipline is teaching. That's the root, we, the Latin we word for discipline is to teach. And so when we're teaching kids, we're actually disciplining them. We teach them the right behavior and we enforce that right behavior every single time because then we're disciplining them. We provide them discipline. Um, and moving into our number four, a student's negative behavior comes from a missing skill. If you look at it like that, we, we have some great training materials that we decided not to bore you with today. If, if a kid doesn't know how to do a math problem, we don't just keep yelling at them and saying, I told you how to do this. I told you a dozen times. We stop, we reteach, we rethink how we're teaching it. If a kid's missing a behavior skill, if they don't know how to express their anger, so they spit on me, reteach. It would be okay for you to express your anger. It's okay that you're mad at me. I, that was fine. But, this is not okay, and this is not okay. Here's what you can do instead. Reteach, and that way we don't have those negative behaviors that got them what they wanted all along. If they look like they want attention, they really need connection. It comes down to relationships. Behavior is always communication from everyone. But especially these kids, they don't have the vocabulary, especially these little guys. Um, I don't know who drives the TLC elementary bus, but there's some, there's some tough kids on there. And their behavior is how they communicate. By the high school level, they learn a little bit differently how to communicate. But it's still how they're communicating. Uh, but clear expectations and procedures are always good for all kids. Uh, they just respond well to knowing what's expected. And to get more respect, get more respect. And I want to echo what Raylan said. She's, many of my students call her their favorite teacher. I'm not offended by that because I learn a lot from women. But I hear, oh, Miss Gibbs, she is my favorite teacher of all time. She really, she knows how to get these kids through a behavior with respect intact. Um, and when, when they are aggressive, I, I work with the largest TLC students Physical size. Physical size. <laughs> physical size. And people, my mother is very concerned about my job. She said, well, are you safe? I don't touch the students and they don't touch me. Because they know the consequences if they were to, to come at me. Um, I, it's probably no more than three times a year that I touch a student in any way. And most of the time it would be more of a, hey, I need you to not throw that, you know, just more of a cupping the hand and putting it down. If I restrain a kid, I have to put in paperwork and justify why I did it. I'm still at risk for a lawsuit, so I want to really plead with you. I'm trained to do restraints, and I'm at risk for a lawsuit. Please don't touch the student. We are really open. I've, I've been called from the district office. I don't even remember whose bus I got on to help a student who was getting aggressive and physical, call us. Have the, have the dispatch call us. Um, there are administrators at each school that are trained in MANT. They're trained in de-escalation. We want you guys safe and protected. Lawsuits are not. This, we live in a society that sues at the drop <coughs> of a hat. So please be careful. Uh, protect yourself. Can I just put in a word here for the aides? This is, this is really helpful and it's very good, but there's one thing that 
I feel as an AA that I need to know. I need to know more about the students that are writing on my phone. I need to know what his triggers are. Yes. And, you know, because if I don't know, I'm going to do the wrong thing mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think as AIDS, we all should be taught, you know, what our students think are. So do, do we, one of the things that we wanted to do with the TLC, at least at Crimson Point, is for the teachers to meet with you after you're done with that your route. That great. And then they get to talk about their kids and what sets them off, how to kind of calm them down, what can work for them when they're trying to calm them down, but also to set the right atmosphere, the right environment for them so they're successful. You know, so we could do that. Um, maybe Brenda, you're not, there's that concept and technical skills working for you. So we'll try to organize that for you guys and set it up with a crimson point. Yeah. Yes, I try to look through the IEP so I know mm -hmm. what could set them off and what the teachers do in the classroom. But we don't, I haven't been able to find a few, so maybe we haven't received them. We, we don't have all of them. We, we get right. some. Really tell no, me no, what no. child is. I, I would really yeah. recommend speaking to the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when we talk about teamwork, we always think of the transportation team, the district office team. I'm in the high school team. Well, in the last year, we've started to collaborate as a district CLC team. We need to be part of a team. We all need to talk together. We have so much we could offer each other. I love it when a bus driver will tell one of my staff, hey, this or this happened this morning. The student's complaining because, or has broken down because the uh, boy's leaving the high school soon, and I, yes, and it's causing issues, because then I can go and, and work on the other end. The communication is key. We really need your eyes and your, your perspectives, and I'm sure you could use the same from us, that, that we could tell you some of the things that have worked for us. It's a different environment, but it, it still might be able to transfer somehow. Terry, I have a question. Yeah. So what do you do when you have a student who's standing up and trying to move, like get it out of their seat, when the bus is moving? I mean, my response is to try and hold them in, and then they start hitting you. So we're not supposed to touch them, mm -hmm. but how do you keep them from getting hurt because the bus moves? You can't it ain't safe. It's not a classroom. Mm -hmm. It's on the road. <laughs> it's not. And that's where we recognize you have a whole different, it's tricky for me in the classroom. Um, Raylan, I think, has a suggestion on that I was one. just going to say, are you able to say, hey, I'm putting you in charge of making sure everybody is sitting down and the bus is going? No. It, at the moment of escalation, that probably wouldn't work. No. But like, as soon as he gets on, then he's got to call himself in the chat as well as other people. Am I feeling that?
of course you have to keep a student safe, and if that means touching in that moment, that's how we safety. Mm -hmm. um, please, just more, mostly I'm concerned, I and mean, we, we're just way too aware of litigation every day, and we don't want you guys in trouble. Uh, you're quality workers, you, we need you here, and we don't want you in trouble. So, so my thing is prevention. So how do you set it up so he's not asked to be standing? What is the purpose of standing? I guess that's the question you need to ask the teacher. You know, um, what is he trying to tell you when he's standing up? Is that for attention and power? You know, so he wants to go home. He didn't want to leave. He sees mom going for a walk and he wants to go with her. Oh, as you're driving away. Correct. Okay. dropping them at the daycare and they don't want to be left, they start crying. We always tell the kids, you know, mom's going to be back, you're going to be safe, and when it's time to come home, I'll come back and, and pick you up. And I'm wondering that same separation anxiety thing is what driving this child to stand up and say, you know, I'm picking you up, I'm taking you to school today, but if, you know, you'll see your mom at the end of the day. That reassurance that mom is going to be there when he comes back from school. I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking that's what triggers anxiety, that's why he's standing up and, and wanting to be with mom, you know, so it could be a separation anxiety. And to see if you want help talking to the teacher or evaluating the student, you can certainly talk about that. What school? Edward. Oh, okay. So we've got a very good game to see there. So, so yeah, you know, I, I really want to emphasize, let's work as a team. Let's you guys probably feel very isolated. I can't even imagine. Um, let us help you. Yeah. And, let, us, and, let us do it. And you know, we have how many kids? 5,000 kids in the, and we have how many of these kids that give us the hardest time? What, 1%, right? And they take all oh, our this time. This is so much energy. You know, out of those 5,000 kids, we probably have, what, 50 kids total that, this kid, that has the extreme behaviors that we guys have to deal with every day. But they deal with us when you're driving down the road. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we need each other to be able to do this No, I, I have long believed that there's a special place in heaven for bus drivers. I believe that as long as I've had children. And, and I really do believe that because I think you have one of the hardest and underappreciated jobs in education. You have their lives in your hands, and it's you and a moving vehicle and all these kids and all these unknowns, and it's it's a lot. And whoa, whoa. and we do appreciate what you do. Um, it, it literally makes a difference to me every single day when you talk about it. It's, it. It changes their day, it affects their day, and we appreciate. Do you guys have questions? Any questions about anything? And really, you know what? What we do is every day we have to try something new too. So if something doesn't work, we try something out. So just me, when I was suggesting try that, it's just try something, and then if that doesn't work, try again something else. And that's really a big part of is trying to figure it out <laughs> what's going to work. So anyone have questions, anything? I think that we're pretty much good to go. Here were our objectives with this. And sometimes being in and enjoying a healthy relationship doesn't require any words. So just them feeling that you care about them is even enough. I like this little picture. Very I like the no words part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the less said, better. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Thank you all for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.